Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, and welcome to the Academy Gaming Hour. And what we do on this stream is we either stream a new game every week, or we uh, interview uh, people from the industry, you know, kind of get their insights Hello, from the gaming boys. industry. And today we have a very special guest. We have uh, Victoria Atkins, who was the voice of Ethan Brock on Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which we're playing. Hi guys. Um, so yeah, uh, Victoria, just to start off, I guess we can, get, uh, we can just get you know a small introduction. For those of us who don't know who you are or uh, might uh, be familiar with you but not know exactly where, you can be able to share that. <laughs> yeah, my name is Victoria Atkin and I did the voice and motion capture and facial capture, the full performance capture for EV Fry in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Awesome. So that's so our stream today, you know, uh, we are playing on the Twitch stream, we are playing on the Twitch background. Uh, our audio is a bit loud today. So you see this thing right here, these uh, stowaways? I actually did the motion capture for the kid on that. Oh really? <laughs> and that's my other little day. Okay. Let's see. Sorry guys, we're trying to fix the game audio right now. Is it really Yeah. Let's see. Okay, can is everything good on the stream guys? Can you hear? Or is it just because he's in venues? Yes, thank you, Kimboli. Um is it still too loud? Smells like Jacob's cooking. Was it was it better on the menu? Just all the way, it's fine. Um, or just a little bit. Okay, uh, all right, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, so, all right, back on track. Uh, our intern, <laughs> yeah, our intern John uh, will be playing uh, Assassin's Creed in the background while we interview um, Victoria. And, sorry, yeah, so you were saying you were you were doing the motion capture for the train se sequence? Yeah, so that, that train sequence is fun. I've never done an interview with the, uh, with the game being played at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. You can watch with the, the viewers. They, yeah, the stowaways on the train. Um, the I actually was the child motion capture for that. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Fun. So, uh, well, you know, we have some questions here for you, and I guess we'll just get into it. Um, so our first cool. question... Yeah, yeah. So our first question is, you know, just... Just to start off, what was like the process of your getting your role in Assassin's Creed Syndicate like? You know, um, when it, when they came with it, uh, came to it with you, uh, were you initially attracted to this um, the part, or how did it work there? Well, it's interesting because with game and auditions, most of the time they don't tell you what the project is. Right. Um, so for this, was it was the same kind of process that. They put me forward for, uh, you know, an action heroine type role, which was a goal of mine right. last year. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I just did an audition tape like I would do for any television or film role mm -hmm. and uh, sent it off. You know, I didn't hear back for a little while. And then um, they actually originally wanted me to do it in a northern accent. So she sounded really? a bit like Egret from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I heard... Which I did. Wow, um, yeah. I, and they just decided they against it. it. Oh, they liked it. Awesome. Yes. You know, they liked it, but I think the whole game went in a different direction. Um, right. So, um, and I think internationally to mm -hmm. understand the northern accent is a little trickier than a yes. general uh, RP accent. So uh, they asked my manager if she could, if I could do it in a London accent. And right. She said she'll give it a go. And then, yeah. <laughs> and, then, I, I and it stuck. Tape in, uh, yeah, it didn't sound too bad, so mm -hmm. I was able to do it in my in my own accent. That's awesome. Uh, which was nice, and then uh, yeah, then you know the long process of a couple of auditions from home. Tape. Oh, uh, sorry, Victoria. I think we're you're a little soft on our end on the Twitch stream. We're gonna try to boost you here. 
Um, okay. Yes. Deviations from the mission. Let's see. Okay. Um, do you know if it's possible on your Skype if we can uh, up the volume a little on the microphone? I've just upped it a bit. Okay, I'm that should be good. Microphone. Try our best here. Sorry about this, guys, on the stream. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should have put my microphone in, but I'm yeah. just doing it off my own. No, no, this should be fine. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, um, so, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that was, that was the process, really, and then I went to... Um, meet with the producers at Ubisoft and we had a good chat and they told me what it was for and right yeah then you know it went into production and then I met Paul who plays Jacob mm -hmm. it was a long it was a very long process but really it was great and, and it was really cool to get on the motion capture floor and get started awesome right um so before that um when you first figured out it was a video like a role for a video game did that surprise you at all like when they came up uh with when they uh, told you the offer was for a video game because yeah well i knew it was a video game going into it oh okay um, I, I just didn't know what it was for gotcha I know what video game it was for. Um, so i knew it was for a video game mm -hmm. which was different for me but i'd just been in for destiny mm -hmm. oh yeah the trailer which they really quite liked me for so i was on a pencil and then it went to another female but that was only for the trailer i see um so obviously that didn't work out because Assassin's Creed was supposed to happen. So it was interesting. So I was just starting to audition for video games, which mm -hmm. was a brand new thing for me because I'd just been doing mainly television and film. Right. But uh, it was exciting. It was exciting to kind of embrace this new genre and and try and you know see what it was all about. And right. I'm very open to to those things. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you know, you mentioned the motion capture process, and this was your first time working yeah. with it, correct? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. was it was how how was that seeing you know your movements, your motions, your express your expressions, um, just translated onto Eevee? To animation. Yeah, it was. Um, it's very interesting because obviously when you're on screen, you, mm -hmm. you know, you you see yourself. Right. But with the motion capture, you. You know, you're performing as you would in any other, you know, medium of television and film. It's right. acting is acting, but it's um, it's interesting because it's almost like they capture a soul, of you right? And, and animate it. So you know, people that know me can see my expressions. Yeah. See others, you know, building this this character, but um, yeah, it's an interesting medium of of just kind of translating a soul rather mm -hmm. than a it's 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 interesting it's very interesting how they managed to capture that right that essence of a person and and uh, and put it into animation right and i know you know when you're acting traditionally you know there's there might be a backdrop there might be a setting you might be dressed up mm. for for this you're wearing like a full body suit you got little <laughs> dots on your face and how, yeah. how was did it make the acting part diffi more difficult or just different or how is that Do you know what, so that's quite a common question for me and yeah um, it's uh it's interesting i mean obviously wearing that helmet mm -hmm. the camera right in my like face and my kind of line of sight was the thing that was most trickiest because you know you're trying to look another actor in the eye and mm -hmm. you're trying to move and you have something right in your eye line or you know a camera that's right where you would be looking at things right so that was, I suppose, tricky to get used to that. Um, for me, the not having any props or costume or set was um, was quite liberating. Mm. And I, I think for me as an actress, the reason I got into this and the reason I love what I do is because I just absolutely love to play. Awesome. And for me, that was an arena like when I was a child, you know, anything is possible and you yeah. just you make belief right and whatever you can make belief you know is is doesn't need to be the same as anybody else's you know it's all in your imagination which mm -hmm. is very freeing i think for an actor nobody you know telling you where you've got to be or on a certain mark or right you know you have to go and sit in the chair on this line or you know move at this point um there was no um set thing so it was quite freeing mm. in that sense um not have that. Awesome. So, yeah, so it really sounds like you enjoy it. Would you be, um, so would you, are you, would, 
now that you've done such a thing, is it a kind of thing that you'd be more open to doing more often now that you've done motion capture definitely. once? And I, yeah, I, I definitely. And I've been auditioning for some, some fantastic projects lately, and I'm sure the next one will fit, mm -hmm. um, fit soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I love it. And yeah. Me, I, I grew up doing sport and I, and I love being physically active. And for me, trying to, you know, do almost sport and acting at the same time. Right. Motion capture. And it was nothing that I ever even knew about. Yeah. I was very into movement whilst I was training. Um, not particularly dance, but movement mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, how the body works. So for me, it, it's an ideal, an ideal place to play. So for definitely, I really hope I do a lot more. Awesome. Sure. That's great. Well, I think we're going to try to sprinkle in some uh, questions from the viewers as we go on. Um, and I think we have one right here yeah. by Lisa Misha. And she asks, you know, I've seen footage of Paul Amos up high in a harness to do mocap for some of the roof running and jumps, etc. And I'm curious as to if Victoria had to do lots of stunts as well. How challenging was it to do those mocap stunts? Hmm, good question, Lisa. Um, I think that video might have been uh, a You Do It video that the community development team did. Mm. And I, I did do a one very similar, which was the street fighting. So that's oh, on the SSB nice. channel that you can watch, yeah. Um, but we, both of us, had um, had stunt people to do our huge, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the stunts in the thing. But we did get to do a lot of running around and, and jumps. And, you know, yeah, I made it work in here. And, <laughs> and I wanted her to have that. Yeah. Because, um, you know, she, that's it really does affect the way you walk. I think the shoes of a character is is vital and thankfully right. i was able to have those even though i didn't have any other costume right um so yeah i, I mean i love i love doing that but we we didn't get neither of us got to do most you know the majority of the stuff of course so yeah a fantastic stunts team that that was that did that mm -hmm. and you know a lot i think recently they released i don't know if you've seen it but for the assassin's creed movie that's coming out um they just released uh, a scene where they watch um um the stunt actor jump from 100 feet or over uh like i don't know how many stories but ridiculously high just to capture that sequence and man it's amazing just how we can translate yeah. the, the from the game into real life um yeah it's amazing i can't wait to see the film yeah i think it's gonna be it's gonna be great yeah same for to us see that, you know, yeah it will be really fun yeah so okay so moving on from that um you know, before Syndicate, did you have any experience um, playing games yourself, just playing them? Um, and, you know, if not, or uh, what was it like experiencing, you know, the culture of the games industry for the first time, or being so immersed into it? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's unlike any other culture, because it's, mm -hmm. I think, you know, with games, people get so into it because they get to spend hours of their private and personal time right. watching it. And it's something that a lot of people, you know, do on their own or if they are playing multiplayer, that you know, they've got a headset on. Mm -hmm. So it's, I feel like it's a lot more of an intense experience than television and film in, in many ways. Right. And so the fan base is, is I wouldn't say, is, is just a lot... Um, Intense is not the word, but just uh, more focused. Right, you know, okay. It's really, you know, everybody, especially the Assassin's Creed fans, which are, who are incredible, mm -hmm. and very well received, both Paul and I, and it's... Oh, yeah. It's so they love you guys. Part of that community. Yeah, <laughs> I, love those, I love them. I mean, it's such a great community to be part of, and how lucky are we, really, to, to have that. So, um... Mm -hmm. Uh, I've kind of forgotten what your question was, but... No, no, that was... That. No, that was great. We just wanted to know how you viewed the industry, just how being part of it for this experience and just oh, how it was for you I yeah oh yeah that too <laughs> yes yes yeah i played well growing up i did you know you know games were coming coming out i played you know crash bandicoot and tomb raider and mm -hmm. you know all these games but then you know whilst i was in education and training at drama school i you know i, I just didn't have time to to play games and mm -hmm. i was reading books and plays and going to the theater right so i didn't get involved in it so it's kind of nice that it's been reintroduced to me doing this and uh there's some there's some really cool things like out at the moment which just blow my mind the graphics of all these things are just getting better and better right awesome um 
Okay, so we have another uh, viewer question. Uh, the gamer gent asks or says, Evie was praised by critics and fans for being a very progressive representation for female characters in games. And he wanted to know, what did you personally do to build that character? Or were there any characters you referenced for the part? Yeah, good question. Um, thank you. This, um, yeah, thank you so much. I'm happy that it has been represented that way. Um, for me, I think I came at a different angle, maybe, than people prior, I don't know, you know, I, mm -hmm. I've not actually spoke to any of the female actresses that have done a similar a similar process, but for me, I, I didn't come at it as a game, I came at it as an actress, and, and I wanted to create a three-dimensional human being that people could relate to, and so for me, I prepped it like I would any other character, like I did with my Hollyoaks role, with I did, you know, with any character that I've ever portrayed, and, and I just did my research on you know, Victorian England, what it would be like to be an assassin, what it would be like to have a twin brother, you know, and just try to build all of those elements into this woman that, you know, lived in that time and was helping people and, and that was her job, you know, and she also flirted with people and fell in love with another assassin and, yeah. you know, so she had all of these, hopefully, these truthful elements that people could really relate to and you know her brother she loved and wanted to protect but he also annoyed her and you know every I tried to make every character whether it was David Brewster or Charles Darwin or yeah. you know Henry or oh, yes. Crawford Starrick somebody a different relationship like we do in real life you know not anybody that you interact with is very different to anybody else so I think that's probably the main thing that I I try to bring to Evie that's awesome okay so uh, you know, another question, just if you could visit, you know, Assassin's Creed, people here obviously know, uh, we go into the past, so if you could visit any historical period like the protagonists, um, where would it be and why? Well, I think the Victorian period is, is great and obviously we did that, um, but I really like um, World War Two. Oh, okay, that kind yeah. of era. Yeah. Um, although obviously it wasn't a nice time to be alive with the World War, but I... Just a visit. I don't know. I, yeah, I think that would, you know, I I just, I don't know, it seemed to be a time of, I don't know, something in history that was quite magical in many ways as well as horrific, you know. Oh yeah. Um, it's time to lay down your head. So, yeah, I think, I well, think I maybe that so time period, and, and they do touch it. upon that in, in Syndicate with the yeah. Lydia Fry, uh, which I think is World War One actually. Yeah. But yeah. I will continue your experiment. Awesome. Well, the gamer gent asked another question, and he wanted to know. Uh, well, he he, he said your role in Holly Oaks was also quite breakthrough in terms of gender norms in television. That one too. And he was just wondering if that experience particularly <laughs> helped in creating Evie. To gain what we cannot take. Um, I, I I suppose you know every life experience and every mm -hmm. thing that you come at as an actor or an actress. I mean, you can only bring yourself and your experiences right. to every creative I mean whether you're a, an artist or a writer or whatever you are you know you bring that creative element to to that and so I would say you know yeah um, in in some ways I think because Evie isn't highly sexualized yes. um, I think perhaps my experience of that role perhaps did did bring on this you know what is gender what does it matter right. you know and I really wanted um, Evie to be as strong and as capable as Jacob and to be seen by you know players as you know as good to play Evie as Jacob you know yeah. and, and that was a that was a real uh, I wanted that to be seen in games okay. I wanted a woman to be seen as strong as a guy right so yeah you know you've been uh, we Evie is often described as, you know, very strong, very independent, That's and, you know, how much of, how much of Evie would you say is just in yourself, out. personally, as, like, your <laughs> <laughs> Like, how much do you see yourself in Evie, or, or if not, like, how much of Evie do you want to be like? No, <laughs> uh, Evie, Evie's pretty cool, I mean, yeah. I, I think she's, uh, I don't obviously have a hidden blade and cane, <laughs> but I'm not as cool as that, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, like, obviously I'm, I think it's probably best to ask my friends and family this, but um, I think, yeah, independent, 
of course i think you know i i, I definitely am and um strong i mean i suppose exteriorly i'm probably come across as a tough cookie but i'm not really and i don't think to be honest i don't think ev is underneath it all especially with the the you know flower sequence with henry and yes you know the way she is with the kids and the and the you know um florence nightingale and so i i, I think that you actually do see that in the game of course she's strong with the yeah. fights and all that but there is this hopefully i've able to show this a little bit of a tender side to her as much as she can be with an as an assassin right you know like a lot of layers in in the character yeah style. i hope i hope she's layered and i suppose that's very much <laughs> like me i'm I imagine people think that I'm pretty complex. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, maybe. yeah, so, you know, just maybe take a little uh, detour and just kind of get into uh, yourself. Uh, I hear you were once a professional skier, is that true? Well, yeah, I brought... Can we talk about that? Yeah, why not? Um, I love sport, I always grew up doing sport, but my dad was in the British Navy ski team, and so when I was younger, me and my sister were put on skis pretty much after we could walk, pretty, pretty young, and then, you know, I just grew up, you know, at where we live, England, which didn't have snow, everyone says how did you do that in England, but it, it's like a plastic matting. Um, so I, I learned to ski on that, and then the have found a new my dad of became part of the Salalem race David team there. Yeah. And, and so we just, know we just, you it. know, did it, and we the were Salalem racing around us. England. And then um, the when I got to a certain level, I joined the Southern Region Squad, well, I was asked to join the Southern Region Squad for England. So I was doing that. So yeah, kind of like semi-professional and, you know, for a bit whilst I was growing up. And then when I hit sort of 16, I... Decided well, I can't really rehearse and yeah. train. So you, at the same you had to pick one. Um, so yeah, what do I want to do most? And as much as I love London skiing, you know, I, I still do that a lot for good. holidays and yeah. stuff. Crawley. But you know, Father acting hopefully will be with me for life. So that's awesome. You could continue. Yeah. Legacy yeah. And other than that, you know, we we know that you have a tempers. you've written a novel, uh, London. Love. I have. Yeah. I um, have. Yeah. What 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 can you tell us what it's about and your inspirations for writing it and such? Yeah, I think, well, as a kid and as an artist and actor, I, I like writing stories. I've always liked doing that. And um, it was just a story that I wanted to tell. And it was it's like a romantic thriller that's set in London. Um, yeah, I've done the e-book and the paperback book. And then last year, I narrated it as an audio book. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's on it's on uh, Amazon, and it makes me very happy when people buy that book or tell me that they've read it, because it's uh, it's something that's uh, a creative thing that I did, you know, all by myself and kind of produced all yeah. by myself. So it was the first time that I, you know, done it without the backup of Ubisoft or Hollyoaks or Channel Four. Um, so right. yeah. Um, so do you so, yeah. do you kind of is it somewhat of another passion where you know if in the future you would write more? Would you write uh, for movies and such in, uh, rather than acting in them? I Is love to write. Yeah. I love to write. Um, whether I'll do that in the future, I'm not sure. I, I like to creatively write. Right. Um, I wouldn't rule anything out, to be honest. Like I never know which way my creative endeavors will go. I like to team up. I'm teamed up with Jeffrey Yahalem, who wrote Assassin's Creed Syndicate, who was the lead writer. There was many writers on it, but um, yeah. So him and I have teamed up for a project. I kind of like to help with story ideas rather than write easy. the script mm -hmm. so i have lots of like imaginative ideas so with it him he's kind of written a pilot script and i've kind of helped with story like ideas right. but for me playtime is the best you know acting is is and is and has always been my favorite and my true love you know my longest awesome. love of course um you know so you you know you just explained a little bit of your background and you know whether it was creatively writing or you know your time skiing or anything else in your life that you feel uh, heavily factors into your your acting uh, like mm. where your experience comes like your past experiences personally and how that affects you as an actor actress. What do you mean? Are there anything like, else that? Not 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 necessarily anything else, but just 
how have your experiences in the past, even the ones we haven't talked about, really colored uh, how you've become or grown as an actress? Well, I think, I think people. Mm-hmm. I think people that I meet and relationships that I have, you know, friendships or strangers or mm-hmm. experiences in life, you know, that that has colored my palette as an actress, and I just hope that I have a life that takes me to, you know, far away places or. I have a big curiosity as a person, you know. Yeah. So I like I like to, you know, where someone wouldn't want to go down a back alley. I find that exciting, awesome. you know. Like, yes, for sure. Or if there's a if there's a door that shouldn't be open, I want to open it. You know, I that's just the way that I experience my life, and and I think and that is so what enriches me as an actress, and and I think those experiences and just a way people, you know, yeah. people are the are the best are the best, are the best thing for actors. Yeah. You know, I, I think you can we can watch people. I love people watching, but you can. Everybody's so different, and every interaction you have in life is so different. So, I think that's probably what colors my work as an actor more than anything else. That's awesome. Okay. Um, we have a couple more viewer questions. So, yeah. Uh, Charlie Fry asks, on the topic of motion capture, did you have a favorite scene to uh, to act out to motion capture? Yeah, good question, Charlie Fry. Um, uh, I don't know. I loved it so much. I really did love doing the DLC, the Jack the Ripper stuff. Um, oh yeah. That was, a, yeah, that was a different challenge for me. Um, but you know, all the scenes with Paul were fun. You know, doing right. Jacob and Eddie yes. banter, and I loved working with Jazz Deal, who played Henry. That was, that was just cute to, you know, to have this just different dimension with you know we're trying to do our work, but Evie and Henry have got this you know little chemistry that they're trying to push down or yeah. deal with, and they don't quite know how to do that. I mean, that was that was fun to act and. And play with, and especially when it was Jacob in the room as well. How do you, how do you navigate someone that you fancy when your brother's in the room? <laughs> right, um, right. That was that was kind of fun. Yeah, that that's useful for the rest of us in life too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not sure if Evie did it very well, but um, she did, certainly tried to. I A good know. place of reference. Not since we were two. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned the Jack the Ripper DLC. Uh, was the process of creating that uh, any different, or how different was that from the main game? Well, it was definitely a shorter process. Obviously, it's a shorter game, so it was a you know an intense kind of three or four week period. But um, in terms of acting it, I mean, she's twenty years older, so I had to try and right. you know, accumulate twenty years of experience of Evie. You know, and that just had to be unconscious when I first came onto the mocap floor to perform that. So, yeah, trying to build it and factor in 20 years <laughs> was kind of tricky. Um, and to, you know, make sure that she was coloured with with that when you first meet her in the DLC. Yeah. But I didn't really, you know, her, cha- her voice wasn't changed too much. I mean, maybe she sounds a little more weathered, but, you know, I really didn't make too many changes to her voice or physicality because I don't think people really change that much in in that period of time. But it was fun to explore what I might be like in 20 years. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, Kim Boley 27 asks, for Victoria, with yes. Evie going along the Kenway family history within Syndicate, did you research a bit of Black Flag uh, so you understood what happened? Well, I didn't know that Evie was connected to the family history when I started the process. So, I... no. <laughs> I, I didn't, but... Um, but that is a key point to, to point out. So, but I have to be honest, no. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. So the gamer gent asks, is there a specific game or series that you would be particularly interested in performing to our side? Well, I love, I love the Tomb Raider series and the game. I think that's uh, to play Lara Croft. But I, you know, actually to be playing Eevee is, is a blessing and, and there's something brand new that I could create. So um, I think with some of these games, that, you know they bring back this, the, the same character you know it's all so well established that there's only so much new stuff that you can bring to it right. um, so I love that but I 
you know, I appreciate it as it is. Don't know, I'm interested in the new games that are coming out and then the new characters that maybe I can bring some of my knowledge and yeah. experience to to create somebody new. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm interested in performing brand new genres and brand new games and, and there's so many amazing and incredible, you know, creators, game creators out there that hopefully I'll be able to, you know, work with some, some new talent and some other companies as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so we're going to be winding down here. So we, Look at what uh, is one of our last questions city. is, you know, if Why anyone wanted to get into great. acting, um, whether it's labor, for uh, traditional media or video games, um, gang is there the any kind of advice that you would give them? The streets. And Templars manipulate um, advice, advice. All the other I'd right. say train as an actor. If we that's you, you know, if that's what you want to do. I mean, stunts is different as well. Right. If you wanted, if you want to do the stunt motion stuff. capture, I know you some people do mind. do that, and and I then I would say obviously train, do your martial yeah. arts, do your stunt yeah. training, and yeah. and go that way. But if you want to do yeah. voice and this motion capture full performance, for me, I would say you know, I think there are there are courses coming out that are, you know, geared towards that, and so I wouldn't know where that, that is, but I think train as an actor, and yeah. you, then you're open to be able to do your television, film, digital media, motion capture, and it really is, I mean, it's just bringing another human being to life, and, and the great thing about these video games now is that the motion capture floor allows you to do that and and the game creators if you're lucky allow you to explore and play and you know we were very lucky with Ubisoft that they were open to our ideas and, and things as actors and bringing these characters to life so yeah I'd say go go drama school and, and train and, uh, and 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 keep training you know I, I continue to stay in school in between gigs and and just you know work on your craft as much as you can and read read books about acting and just become obsessed with it. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, okay, well, um, Victoria, you know, thank you for interviewing with us on this live stream. Um, you know, you, we, we all love your work, um, Assassin's Creed, and just, um, you know, if is there anything, any future projects that you're working on, you know, whether it be games or other media that you'd be able to share with us, or... Anything like that? Well, I can share that I'm part of a game that comes out in October. Oh, that's, but that's exciting. What okay. Yeah, so I have been, I have worked. Um, it's not as no big a role as Evie, mm -hmm. yes, but I have. That. I am part of a new game that comes out then, and I'm currently just started a new television show. So oh, nice. we shot the pilot, and so we're just waiting to go to series. So that's very exciting. Well, very exciting. And it's a sci-fi show written by the writer of Ender's Game. So it's. It's pretty pretty exciting, cool new sci-fi genre, which I've never done before. But she's another she's another kick-ass character. But obviously, it won't be animated this time. So it'll be fun. It'll be, it's fun to go back to television and awesome. And uh, yeah, but no, I've got another game coming out and auditioning for projects and, and yeah, it's cool. It's busy, but it's fun. That's good. Yeah, we're everyone here uh, will be very excited to see what's coming out next. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Victoria, if anyone wanted to, you know, follow what you're doing or anything like that, where, where can they follow you? Yeah, sure. So I'm on Twitter at Victoria Atkin and um, Facebook. I have a Facebook page, which is, I think, the Victoria. Let me check what that is. I need to, that's so bad that I should know this. No problem. Uh, um, I think it's the Victoria. Yeah, the Victoria Atkin on Facebook, and then yeah, face uh, Instagram Victoria Atkin. So Victoria Atkin across the board, apart from Facebook, which is Victoria Atkin. But yeah, comment. I love everybody's comments and tweets and Instagram comments. It's it's great, and um, and thank you all for just continually supporting my work. I'm I'm really grateful. I'm doing a giveaway as well this week. Um, all you need, all you have to do is retweet the tweet which I'll put back on my pinned post on, on Twitter I'm giving away two copies of my book oh very so, nice yeah really easy just just retweet the pinned tweet after this and, uh, and you can I'll just choose somebody and they'll win at the end of the week okay cool thank you so much Victoria <laughs> um, for our viewers thank you guys for watching if there's uh, if you wanted to rewatch this or, uh, or share it with a friend we're gonna be uploading it to YouTube so just keep an eye out for that. Um, and, okay, thanks again, Victoria. 
All right, thank you. Thank you so Thanks much. so much. Bye. Bye.